Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Well, guys, I have finished building my stand for the surface plate. We started on this in our previous video. And I came out and we did shot a lot of video showing the whole process of this and got back in to start editing it. And as my luck usually holds out, I realized that we had some pretty serious audio issues with almost all the footage that we recorded. It has to do with a little wireless microphone that plugs into my um, mic here. So I got a wireless setup that has a cord and every now and then the cord will go bad and apparently that's what's happened. I keep an extra mic around. Uh, unfortunately it was just strong enough it was registering on the meter on my camera that I thought it was working but it wasn't. Anyway, long story short, I'm going to do some talking about what we did and overlay some video from the project so you can kind of see what go happened to build this. Uh, but unfortunately, it's not going to be one of my typical videos. So let's get into it. So first off, what does the stand for? And I had some questions on this in the first uh, video that we did, and I should have shown this up front, but this is my surface plate. This is a piece of granite uh, that is a precision flat on the top. Uh, ideally, this is probably less than 50 millionths of an inch flat anywhere on here. And it's used as a reference surface uh, for measuring all five in the machine shop, as well as when I'm scraping. Uh, as a master flat surface that I can actually blue on uh, to, to get a print that, sh that, that I can compare something to to make sure I'm, I'm measuring perfect flatness. Uh, this is a precision surface. And this table here is one that I recently acquired. It is uh, three feet wide and six feet long. Uh, it's about 13 inches thick. And weight on this, I don't know exactly. I really want to get a set of scales and weigh it and get a good idea because I know it's heavy. The forklift we had barely picked it up. Uh, which tells me it's somewhere between three and 4,000 pounds, uh, probably on the, the heavier end of that. But anyway, this is what's going to sit up on top of it. If you're wondering why the, the, the table is so low, remember we're going to be 13 inches higher on the top uh, here because this is going to be sitting down on, on top of that. Let's talk about the build itself. So we started, of course, with this top of the table here. This was welded up in a previous video. Uh, we had all that ready to go. First step here is we wanted to get the actual legs here mounted onto this, welded on here. And the legs are three inch by three inch square tubing. These were actually salvaged from the original surface plate stand that I got. They were very heavy duty legs and uh, they were done right. They had the, the piece of metal in the bottom down here that had the one inch tapped hole in it for leveling feet. Now they were originally just using uh, one inch bolts for leveling feet. We replaced those. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but these were nice. So I cut these to the proper length and then we came in and welded them to the top frame or the top table part that we had made previously. Uh, to get these things squared up, I used my squares uh, that I recently acquired from Fireball Tool. And we put two squares on here, one on the side, one on the back, basically 90 degrees from one another. Got them squared in two directions and uh, I went around and tacked each one into place. Now, if you notice, there's a bar that goes across the bottom down here. And this is to add some stability and also it gives me my lifting point uh, where I can put a pallet jack under here and move this whole thing around. And it gives me also a place to put a shelf down here for some storage. Now I had previously cut the length of these uh, bars here. I had the one in the front and the one in the back. And to get my spacing right, I actually used that bar. I just put it across from one of the other. So once we got the first leg in place, we used the bar as a spacer and we tacked the second leg in place. And then once that was done, we did it on the other side. We got all four legs on here. I then came in and we tacked the actual legs in place where they need to go down low. Uh, of course, this was all upside down, so it was up high. But those were tacked in place, and we did the same thing. We got the, the legs here going from back front to back tacked in place as well. And once everything was tacked in place, and I checked everything for squareness, and everything was lining up right, we came in here and we put some really nice welds in here using uh, the, the MIG welder over there, the wire feed welder. And uh, these are all welded in place, good and tight. And I came out, I was actually very happy with the way the welds looked. So uh, once that was done, we basically had the, the, the frame itself was coming along very good. We re things were starting to take shape. I will comment here that we also, in addition to the, the cross bracing on the bottom, I put a a third leg in here, a third uh, cross brace in here in the middle. And we put this in here for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, because of the size that was in here, I'm planning on putting a shelf down here 
and it's going to either have a piece of plywood or a piece of metal I haven't decided yet that's going to sit on here. And I was just worried that it was such a large area that you could get some sag in that. So this was to give it some stability. Uh, it's just another piece of going across there. Uh, but in addition to that, I also put this in here because when we're picking this whole thing up with the pallet jack, uh, I wanted to have that third rail in there because that's actually tying into these cross members that go front to back. And uh, when I pick up on there, assuming that the pallet jack is picking up on all three of those cross members, uh, it's also picking up the whole weight of the table using those welds on the, the, the front and the back cross members instead of just the two going across the, 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 the front. So I just felt like that was just a little bit of a safety thing there to give me a little bit more stability. Again, this whole table is extremely heavy. And while I have no doubt that my welds and everything would have held up just fine, uh, hey, if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? You know, nothing too strong ever broke. I had Tom Lipton said that one time. I really like that quote. And uh, I just like overdoing things, particularly if I'm engineering it. I'm not a real engineer. I'm not an engineer at all, so I, you know, there's been no math, no calculations done on this. Most things done by engineers, they make them just barely strong enough to hold up. When I build something, I want it to be more than strong enough to hold up. And talk about over-engineering things. Uh, that kind of brings me to these pieces up on the top, these little cross members in the top. And this is where the actual surface plate is going to sit on. Now, the surface plate sits on three points of contact. And you see my three pads on here. I actually salvaged these pieces off the original. Uh, surface plate as well, uh, but this, I, I went over, I made my measurements, figured out where the actual pads are on the bottom of the surface plate. Uh, one thing that's interesting is, is they're, they're not uh, symmetrical. One side's in, a little, this side over here that has the two pads is in a little bit farther than the side that has one pad. Normally when I think of uh, putting the three points on the surface plate, I try to put them in at about 30% from the ends and on the triangular pattern. Uh, the pattern here is off, off just a little bit, but that is the way it came from the factory. Uh, that was the original points that they put on the surface plate. And I'm not trying to, again, re-engineer something here. I'm sure they had figured out the balance and the loads and everything of that. And more importantly, when that surface plate was actually finished, when it was uh, had the precision uh, lapping done on it, it was done on those three points. And if we move those three points that it's sitting on, it could actually change the geometry of the top. And we sure don't want that. So we went with what the pads that were already on the bottom and we just matched it to the plate. Now, these cross members here uh, actually are, <laughs> they're a lot more substantial than they look like and they look pretty substantial. I started out with two pieces of angle iron. It looks like a piece of channel, but this is a piece of two inch angle iron and we notched them out so they'd fit on the ends to set them on here. Uh, they're actually welded together down the center to make them solid. Uh, but once I put them on here, I got a little bit nervous. Just, is this gonna be strong enough? Particularly on the one that's centered up over there in the middle. Is that gonna sag at all? And again, while I don't think that it would, uh, just to add an extra level of safety. Before I welded the top pieces in place, I actually welded a piece of channel up underneath this as well. And uh, that was a piece that I had laying around here. It was, uh, I think, two inches wide and an uh, inch and a half thick. It's not some of the same tubing, a little bit different tubing that will be used elsewhere. Uh, but that was welded in first. And then we came in and we actually welded the angle iron pieces on here. Uh, the angle iron pieces were welded in place. There was actually a gap left between them. And I went in and welded that solid across here, but also welded it, not only these two pieces to one another, but we welded it to that uh, piece that's underneath it. So this should be plenty strong enough. There's a lot of steel across here uh, that's gonna be able to support the surface plate. And uh, I, I have no doubt now that, uh, again, it's, yes, it's overbuilt, absolutely. But uh, if I'm doing it, I want it to be done uh, stronger than it needs to be. The final little step here was to put these angle iron pieces on the corners uh, just to kind of hold everything in place. And this, again, is some uh, two-inch angle iron. Uh, I think 3 16 inch thick, and uh, we got about two inches of height here. And the idea here is, is that once this uh, surface plate is sitting in here, these are just some guides to make sure that that plate never shifts off the top. It's so heavy that it's very unlikely that you would ever 
bump it or move it and actually get it to move off of those pads, but this assures that it stays in place. So if, if I ever bumped into it with something or if it ever tilted just a little bit or whatever, it's not gonna slide off the top. That was one of the things that the original surface plate table did not have on it. And uh, this is, in my opinion, a, a critical part of the design just to kind of, again, give you some safety to make sure it's not going anywhere. These were just uh, welded in place. Again, we just came in here, put them on here. I actually held them in place with my hand, tacked them in, in place, and then we uh, welded them on here really well. Uh, but those are in place now. And it's, it's gonna be captured within this top. And yeah, it's not a super tight fit. There's probably, you know, all the way around here, there's probably an inch clearance. Uh, you know, these are probably an, out an inch wider than the actual surface plate itself. So it'll come in here just fine. Got some wiggle room, but it's not gonna come off of the edges at all. There was a lot of welding in this. I went through a good bit of wire over here on my machine and uh, we got everything welded up very well. It, we took a good bit of time to get all this done. We're going through this pretty quickly and unfortunately you're losing a lot of the build in my short narration, but you get the idea of what we did. But once everything was finished, as far as the welding goes, I came in and we just wiped the whole part down with mineral spirits. I actually took a wire wheel on the grinder back here, went over here, removed any scale off of it, wiped it down again really well, uh, and getting it prepped for painting. Now, as far as painting goes, uh, I didn't bother to get out the big uh, paint gun and all that. We just used some rattle cans, and I was just using some Rust-Oleum paint here. I've had really good luck with Rust-Oleum paint on machines and different things in the machine shop. And you can get it in some pretty nice colors. The color I'm using here is called Almond. It's kind of a beige type color. And uh, I really like this color. It, it looks good. I haven't actually used it in my shop much, but uh, I thought it was time to, to get this out here as a color and we used some rattle cans and just uh, painted this on here. I'm real happy with the paint job. It looks really good. Um, I do need to come in here and kind of touch up a few places. I, I can see there's a few places a little bit thin. Probably just need to give the whole thing a, a second coat uh, just to make sure it's, uh, it's going to hold up well over time. But that was the paint job, and again, I think it looks great. Uh, final thing that we did was the leveling feet. Again, originally, this piece had just some, uh, some bolts. It was a one inch bolt. Here it is right here. These were the ones that were up underneath there and to, to be able to level it up and down. And I was not real happy with that, mainly because this is a pretty small area uh, that you're coming in contact with the floor. I did the math on it. It's about two square inches on this head, uh, on this hexagon head. So Josie's gonna come in here and photobomb us. Meet Josie the cat. Everybody loves the cat when she comes across my videos but about two square inches per foot. Assuming that this uh, whole surface plate and frame and everything weighs around 4,000 pounds, and I'm just using that for math purposes, that's about 500 pounds per square inch uh, on the bottom of this uh, foot. So you have a good bit of weight in a very small area. Using these leveling feet down here, I got those from McMaster Car. Uh, it's got a four inch pad on the bottom, it actually has a little piece of rubber on there so it won't slide around very easily. The bottom swivels, it goes up, and of course you have the leveling screw that goes through there that's adjustable. Uh, I can crank these things up and down, and there's a little jam nut that actually locks it in place. Very nice setup. They're a little bit pricey. Those are probably about, I don't know, $30, $40 a piece. Uh, but I've used these before, and I really like them. But going with that larger pad, that four-inch pad, that's about 12 and a half square inches of contact on each one. When you do the math on there, basically, again, assuming we have a 4,000 pound load on here, I've taken my pounds per square inch on my foot from 500 pounds down to about 80 pounds per square inch. So uh, a big improvement there that kind of helps things sitting on a concrete floor uh, and spreading that weight out. It, it, while it doesn't sound like a lot, it really makes a, a big difference. You can think about putting all the pressure on a point are spreading it out over a bigger area, and it does help. So anyway, the leveling feet I'm real happy with. And on this surface plate, I think on my previous one, I actually had where I could adjust, uh, in addition to the four on the floor, I had where I could adjust the three points here for leveling the plate. Because of the weight of this one, that really wasn't practical, so we're, we got the solid mounted ones, but I can level my plate using the four feet. It's not as easy to do as compared to the three point leveling, uh, but it is still doable. 
Uh, biggest thing though is that on a concrete floor, you know, your concrete floor is rarely perfectly level. And, and if I move this thing around the shop, uh, I can actually adjust those feet so that I'm getting good contact and it's not, the table's not rocking. So anyway, that's pretty much it on the build here. Uh, you can see the final product. One of the biggest features of this uh, whole surface plate though is again, being able to get in here with a pallet jack. And uh, I'm gonna show you how we can move this thing around very easily in the shop, even with a table on it, using the pallet jack with the uh, way we have things set up now. All right, so I can come in here with this pallet jack very easily, get it centered up on here. And even with that nice heavy top on the top, this pallet jack will move an awful lot of weight around. A couple of quick jacks, boom, away we go. Uh, this is one of the features of this, and I'm really trying very hard uh, when I'm building things like this, even workbenches, tables, uh, the machines themselves, I'm trying to get them where I can come in here with this pallet jack and move things around the shop. I'm constantly needing to move things for one reason or another, either to work on a machine, rearranging the shop, uh, something's in the way when I'm cleaning, and it's just really convenient to be able to use that pallet jack. If you got big machines in your shop and you need to move them around, invest in a pallet jack, man, they are awesome. Uh, it is so easy to move things. And that's the whole concept here. I'm, again, I'm trying real hard. Everything I got in here, I wanna be able to take a pallet jack, put up underneath it and move it around uh, with no problem at all. And that was one of the biggest design features that I was going for here. This front panel down here, uh, I designed that. Uh, at some point in time, I'm going to probably build a tool chest to go in here with some drawers that I can pull out. Uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to do that in metal or wood yet. I'm actually thinking about maybe building a Gerstner style uh, cabinet. When I say Gerstner style, you know, the oak wooden toolbox type uh, to go up underneath here that I can have some drawers to pull out to put some measuring equipment and whatever in. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking about once I get my wood shop going. I don't know when that'll happen, but that was kind of the idea for this area down here in the bottom. For now, I'm just gonna put a shelf in there and probably use that, but at some point, I would really like to get some, some drawers in here for storage uh, to take advantage of that space up underneath the bottom of the surface plate. Uh, so that it's just not waste space in the shop. Well, there you go, the final product. Uh, as you see, we got a nice surface plate stand built here. Um, I'm real happy with the way this thing turned out. I apologize again for having to come in and do the narration on this rather than the full-blown typical video that I like to do. Uh, but I think you got a taste for what we had to do for this. All in all, I probably spent about uh, two days total time, workshop time, probably two full days out working on building this, getting it all put together, cutting the material, welding it together, uh, prepping it for painting everything else. Uh, but real happy with the outcome and uh, I'll, I'll say this too, uh, after building this, it's kind of boosted my confidence a little bit in my welding skills, as well as my fabrication skills. This is a little bit out of my wheelhouse from where I'm normally working in. And uh, I've got some other fabrication projects uh, that we're gonna be working on pretty soon that kind of go along with the shop build itself. Uh, I've got at least two more projects that I'm thinking of that's gonna require some custom fabrication. And hopefully over the next few months, we'll be able to get those in and do some more uh, fabrication again, in support of the shop itself here. And with that, uh, that's going to be a wrap on this video. So as always, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave me some comments if you like. Uh, leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. And most importantly, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, that's going to be the biggest way to help support me in the future. And with that, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later and see you in the next video.